Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It's February 25th, 2015, and here's a look at our top stories. Tonight, the FCC refuses to publicly release the federal government's plan for the internet takeover. Meanwhile, Barack Obama holds a town hall meeting that is closed to the public, but open to illegal aliens. And a new poll says that the majority of Americans support military invasions of Iraq and Syria. All that plus more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. SOPA, PIPA, CISPA. These are just some of the ways we've seen them try to take our internet away, the government that is. And today is no different. FCC refuses to testify before Congress ahead of internet takeover. FCC Chairman Tom Wheeler is refusing to appear before Congress as the FCC prepares a regulatory internet takeover. Not only that, but Wheeler has also refused to publicly release the FCC's 332-page draft of the internet regulations. So if you or I decided that we just didn't feel like going in front of Congress, there'd be some serious repercussions for that. But if you're the head of the FCC, it's not that big of a deal. And it's one of those, we have to pass it to find out what it's, what's in it kind of deals. And we've seen this before, you know, we've seen Nancy Pelosi doing things like this. And we heard Mr. Wheeler, he says something to the effect, we have to keep the internet fair. And I think the internet is pretty fair as it is. You know, I pay my 40 so dollars a month for my internet service. I get to use it, I can use Netflix, whatever I want to do, and I'm fine with that. Same deal if you have a phone, you have a data package, you have, you know, $50 worth of content or whatever, use that up, you get another data package. I'm okay with that as well. But now the government wants to come in and regulate your internet for you. And to hear more about this, let's take a listen to an interview on Larry King. I think that we at the FCC should be as open and transparent as the internet itself and let the American people see for themselves what it is that we're talking about. Wait a minute, you can't tell me what's in the document? That is correct. Uh, stamped on the front is an internal uh, use only non-public uh, moniker. And unless I'm authorized by the chairman to disclose this, I can't let you or any of the other millions of Americans who are interested in the internet economy know what the FCC is going to do. Why? Until we vote on February 26th, this document will not be released. And as I said before, they want to pass it before they can show you what's in it. But you do have guys like that fine gentleman trying to warn you about these things to come from the most transparent administration in American history. I cannot say that without laughing. And the transparency seems to know no bounds because now we have Obama having town hall meetings that are closed to the public. And one person was quoted as saying, Obama today flies to Miami to take part in a town hall with, hand -picked, with a hand-picked audience to talk about his immigration policies and imperial actions. The Miami Herald reports that the event scheduled to take place at the Miami campus of the Florida International University is not being sponsored by the university and is, in fact, closed to the public for all intents and purposes. And he does this. You know, this is what this president does. To reiterate myself, allow myself to reintroduce myself, because myself and Kit Daniels went and saw Obama or attempted to see Obama when he came here to Austin at the University of Texas, well, I guess technically the LBJ Museum. And, you know, we went through the flaming hoops of razor wire. We had to go submit our packets and all that stuff. And I got my press pass and I said, okay, you know, where is it going to be? Where do I need to go? They said, oh, you cannot go in because you were not hand selected by the Secret Service. I said, excuse me, what, what are you talking about? I, I went to the thing. Here's my press credentials and all that. You know, you talk to my boss, whatever. They said, yeah, but the Secret Service was choosing who could come in and who can go. And you're not on that list. So, you know, basically they said, uh, instead of going in the actual room with Obama, you know, being able to ask him a question, we have this other room, this monitor room, that's in a completely different building where you can sit there and watch. And I'm not mad at the LBJ Museum. They were just doing what they were told to do. But this is the type of transparency they see. Town hall meetings where you can't go in unless you're handpicked, and also press events that you cannot go in unless the Secret Service selects you for that as well. Poll, majority of Americans support invasion of Syria and Iraq to put down U.S.-trained Islamic State. If a poll put out by Pew Research can be believed, <laughs> writes Kurt Nimmo, a majority of Americans approve of the ISIS war and a narrow majority want ground troops sent to Iraq and Syria. Due primarily to the ceaseless stream of horrific propaganda, 63% of Americans approve of an airstrike against ISIS positions, while 30% disapprove. And I'll say it like I say pretty much every week because ISIS is consistently in the news. You have Al-Qaeda, 
you know, trained, funded by the United States of America and places like Iraq, also Syria. These guys break off into splinter groups and form ISIS. Now, you know, people call into the show and they don't quite understand. Are you saying Islamic extremists doesn't exist? Yeah, they most definitely do. I'm saying that we're funding and providing these people weapons to use against our own troops. And then we send our own troops over there to fight them. Just like we do have uh, Mexican drug cartels. They existed long before we started giving them guns with Operation Fast and Furious. But once again, we're funding our own opposition. And uh, when I talk about Muslim extremists, I'm talking about the guys burning down Christian villages and chopping people's heads off if they refuse to convert. I'm not talking about Muslims in general. I always throw that out there as well. And since we're throwing things out there, let's throw out the feminists, you know, because we've seen a lot of feminist things coming out. Um, now, when I talk about feminism or just women in general, women's rights, I'm concerned about women in Saudi Arabia being labeled terrorists if they want to drive, uh, women being gang raped in places like India, here in the States as well, women getting raped on campus and all that. But a lot of times your, I guess, third wave feminist, as uh, Paul Joseph Watson will put it, will turn a blind eye to things like this. Despite routinely targeting men for fostering a rape culture, feminists are deathly silent about the brutal gang rape of a woman in her own home while children were present. The victim was at home with her family in Las Vegas when a gang of thugs reportedly kicked in her door, robbed the family at gunpoint, and proceeded to rape her. And although multiple news outlets carried the story, it received no attention from popular feminist blogs. And one writer put it, feminists don't care about rape victims and they never have. And this is the thing that kind of concerns me, or I guess more or less confuses me about feminists because you have the feminists, let's burn the bras and you know free the nipples. Then you also have the feminists who are trying to ban the Sports Illustrated swimsuit issues. So I'm really not exactly sure if they're all on one accord on that. But I think things like this should definitely be reported in uh, I'm kind of surprised that they didn't actually do that if they say they are for women's rights, but to each his own. Now let's take things a little colder, a little chillier, if you will, and talk about global warming or lack thereof, because we see the headline, Lobster Boats Frozen in New England Harbor. And, you know, this is just another example, because I'm sure you guys saw earlier this year, it, it came out, I guess, the beginning of January. 2014, hottest year on record, or hottest year in 100 years, whatever the headline was, and they cherry-picked a few places, like maybe it was exceptionally hot here, 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 and there, but it was also record code here, 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 and there. What places were record code? I'm glad you asked. Uh, City of Chicago, they said it was the uh, coldest year in 100 years. Uh, the Great Lakes were freezing up onto the landmass. It was so cold here in Austin, Texas. The police chief was warning people not to drive because the streets were so slick in the state of Texas. Just a few examples of the many that are going on out there. And recently, I was watching a clip from MSNBC, Bill Nye the Science Guy. And I'm not picking a fight with Bill. I loved him as a kid. I watched the show and all that. But he was saying, don't use the phrase global warming because people understand that sometimes it's cold. He says, don't use global warming. Use the blanket term of climate change. So if it's cold one day, that's climate change. If it's hot one day, it's climate change. If it's rainy one day, that's climate change. If it's a drought next day, that's climate change. So any way you slice it, any type of weather variable will fit into our narrative with so much uh, in so many words. And that's the concern I have about this for people who, who don't quite grasp is this is exactly what's going on. Anything that happens anywhere fits into their narrative. But long before there were SUVs and coal powered plants and all these other things, there were always droughts, always floods, always hurricanes, always tornadoes. And my point about this, you can think we're kooks or whatever else. You can believe what you want to believe. Understand that people like Al Gore, one of the top global warming cheerleaders, has multiple homes and a $30,000 electricity bill. That was reported uh, last year, a year before. These guys, they show up in their private jets, you know, with their whoever's. Guys show up to these Davos co conferences with their two nannies and their families talking about you need to live more within your means. Obama goes to Africa and tells Africans in Africa they should not have air conditioning. And I dare you to go Google that. People don't believe it. You have to show it to them. And this is just some of the things that are going on. And the point I was making with that, regardless if you believe it's true hook, line, and sinker, or you're a little bit skeptical, don't pay any carbon taxes. Say, hey, we can you know, save the children, polar bears can't swim, whatever else. But when they say it's time for a tax, say, nay, let's find some other way. And sometimes the best way to do things is just to operate your Second Amendment right and protect your friends and your family. Gillen Water walked into Good Pharmacy Wednesday morning. He had a gun. Ratcliffe reached for his pistol shot the would-be robber, and then shot again. That second bullet hit Gillenwater's gun. Here's a photo of it. 
That shot lodged the bullet up into the barrel, making it impossible for Gillenwater to fire off any more shots. And coming up after this break, we'll have more gun news. Michael Cargill of Central Texas Gunworks is going to join us and discuss the ATS plans to regulate your ammunition. And also, Alex Jones will be telling us about black sites, the secret sites where your constitution does not exist. And this isn't some foreign, faraway land. This is right here in the United States of America. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. For a limited time, get 25% off on this introductory offer. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. Ancientdefense.com. Used since before the days of the Roman Empire to support the body's natural systems and enhance overall health. Introducing the new InfoWarsLife.com. Oil of oregano formulation, a highly advanced nutraceutical form of this key herb that has been traditionally used by civilizations for thousands of years to promote health. We have now procured the most high quality and potent forms of oregano oil on the market. Sourced from top leading manufacturers to ensure a concentrated level of bioactive ingredients extracted directly from the wild herb and sealed in easy to use capsules you will no longer need to endure the burning of liquid oregano on the tongue wild crafted from the mediterranean oregano species that experts agree is one of the most powerful and most challenging to acquire this winter season it's more important than ever to secure this true form of oil of oregano now available in our limited first run at infowarslife.com that's infowarslife.com or call 888-253-3139 Early in our broadcast, we talked to you about the FCC and their regulations of the internet. We've seen SOPA, HIPAA, CISPA. All they do is repackage the tyranny and bring it under a new name. And now we see the ATF going to a different organization, bringing the tyranny down on ammunition. And to talk more about this, how the ATF is trying to reclassify ammunition, we have Michael Cargill of Central Texas Gunworks. All right, thanks for joining us again, Mike. Thank you for having me. Okay, now we talked a little bit about this, but tell me, well, first of all, can you break it down to the lowest common denominator? What is this thing with the ATF? Okay, well, you know, first of all, you know, we have our different, you know, branches of government. You know, we have our legislative branch, we have our executive branch, and then we have our judicial branch. Mm -hmm. And I find it very funny how the ATF is actually legislating, and I'm not sure what branch they fall under. Right. <laughs> and since they're the department, you know. So um, I, I, that's kind of weird to me. The original intent of this uh, was to actually uh, ban certain types of ammunition for handguns. Mm -hmm. It was never intended for long guns at all. Uh, so it was ma mainly intended for handguns so they could not penetrate um, body armor of law enforcement officers. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, long gun ammunition is for sporting purposes. So it was never intended to go to sporting purposes at all. And it was never intended for, for rifles. Uh, so I, you know, I have a big problem with this, you know, because I like that ammunition. I like it for sporting purposes. Right. So when they say that they want to change it, you know, do you believe that that's all it is? They're just going to change this one particular thing for the uh, for the AR-15, the 223 round. It's just going to end there. No, absolutely not. This is going to start right there and then it's going to go to other things. And then we're going to have a problem with trying to get ammunition, because once you start targeting certain types of ammunition, it's going to cause a problem all the way down the pipeline. And so, hey, if they can't get the guns, then let's go after the ammo. And that's exactly what a lot of people say. And I agree with you on that point especially with this particular round, the AR-15 round. Uh, we've seen, you know, since the recent shootings, uh, all, the, all the things going on, uh, so much demonization of the AR-15 rifle itself, mm -hmm. even companies like Bushmaster being sued and all that stuff. So now it, it seems very fishy to me that they would take this particular gun, this particular round, because I don't think they'd do it in the first place. But as you said, you know, once they get in, they change this. Oh, if we feel like we can change that, we can do that as well. Right. And I, and I try to get people to wake up, you know, stop being sheeple. You know, I was traveling on an airline not too long ago, 
and I walked through security. And as I was going through security, I had a cup of water with me. And this, uh, the ATF, well, not the ATF, but the um, security, TSA. Yeah, TSA agent said, you know, hey, you're going to have to, you know, dump that out. Or you're going to have to pour that out or throw it away. I said, well, you know, why, why do I have to throw this away? And they said, well, because it, it could be an explosive. Yeah. I said, okay, so what do you want me to do with it? Oh, just dump it in the trash can right there. Okay. So, so I can explode it right there. Right. <laughs> we need to stop being sheeple and start questioning things, you know. This needs to stop. You know, the ATF is actually governing, and they should not be. They should not be able to create laws that are going to, where I'm going to be charged with a felony. Right. That is That should be up to Congress. That should be up to our legislative branch. Um, or, you know, and I, I hope not the executive branch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's the thing, because you can call into the ATF right now. I believe we have the article. Uh, it says, contact ATF. On changes to regulate armor piercing ammo. That's the article on guns.com. So people can actually contact the ATF. Now, I noticed that, at least when I looked, they didn't have any type of open forum, you know, like they have done on past things. We can see other people's points of view. Right. So I guess you're just supposed to contact them directly, and then they'll say, well, hell, everybody voted that they wanted to change it, so let's go ahead and change it. <laughs> no, and they definitely need to put, you know, get their input put in there. Uh, let the uh, the ATF know that, hey, this is not something that should be done. This is for, for sporting purposes only. Um, this is the original intent was actually for handguns, not for long guns. You know, so definitely let them know that. And we need to stop, wake up, and, and get involved. Right. And it's not just the AR-15 earlier, or I guess last year, we saw also them come after the AK-47. Yes. And, and every time the, you know, our, this president or you know, this current administration comes out and they're going to attack or say, hey, we need to do anything with any type of firearms. Only thing they do is uh, it causes a big rush. Mm -hmm. You know, people run to the gun store and they try to purchase that item as fast as possible. You know, so that's why he's the number one salesman in, in the land. Yeah, he he's the number one be. gun salesman since his uh, administration. Now, have you seen those spikes in sales when he bans the AKs and all that? Absolutely. The day that he did that, that night, every distributor sold out of the, <laughs> those firearms. Every single distributor in this country. Yeah, and we see it, you know, whether it's the uh, the ammunition, the magazines, the firearms themselves, sometimes everybody rushes out and gets those things. It was just, uh, it was right after Sandy Hook, you know, where you could not buy a semi-automatic rifle. Right. So, you know, if, if they're going to they're gonna do this with the, you know, this particular bullet here, then what's going to happen is, hey, uh, start making it right now. <laughs> and, the, and they're rushing it out there because I guarantee you, as soon as it goes into effect, hey, this is now illegal, uh, then it's going to sell out. Right. Now, when we talk about these bullets, these ammunition, you know, for the people who don't know, you know, what is the significance of an armor-piercing bullet to, uh, to, to the layman? Break it down. Well, you know, well, for this, you know, the armor-piercing is supposed to actually, you know, pierce the, you know, the body armor or whatever, um, or maybe a vehicle or something like that, or um, maybe a, a very strong animal, very strong. Um, like a big buck. Correct, and make sure that it actually gets in there. And that's why I use it, not necessarily, necessarily for a vehicle or anything like that, but I definitely will use it for a very strong animal, one that's actually pretty far away. Right, exactly. Okay, now when we talk about things for handguns, you know, would you support people using that type of thing? Would you recommend anybody use armor-piercing bullets for a, a pistol? No, not, not, not if you're going to use it for personal defense because you need to make sure you need to know where that bullet's going to go. You need to know what your threat is and what's behind that threat. Um, if you fire that, that round... Uh, especially a handgun, you know, then that could go a little further than you want it to go. So no, not for a handgun, but definitely for a rifle. Um, I'm going to use it for long distances. That's the purpose of the rifle. Right. For a handgun, that's usually I'm going to have a handgun at home for personal protection and stuff like that. I'm not going to use my AR-15 at, you know, at home for personal protection. I'll use that while I'm out hunting. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to get that buck or whatever I'm trying to do, and it's a little further, you know, than I think then that's what I'm going to use that round for. And you made a good point there because, you know, you and I, we both support the Second Amendment. You know, people own whatever gun they want to have. But, you know, sometimes I see these YouTube videos and the guys up there, they got the AKs. They live in a one-bedroom apartment. <laughs> and they're like, hey, you breaking my house. And, you know, I'm going to shoot you. Like, no, bro, because it's, it's not going to stop here. It's going to go through a wall and go, possibly into the next. Uh, it's going to go through that wall, your neighbor's wall, and, yeah. every, and everywhere So, else. yeah, that, that's, that's a good point. You know, you want a, you know, a pistol. I like, I like a, a shotgun you know, birdshot, things such as that nature, especially at that close range. And, you know, if I'm going to be at home, I'm actually going to want a handgun because I want to, I may need to clear that room. Okay. I may need to uh, make sure my house is safe. A handgun, I can do that. A long gun, it's going to be hard for me to go around that curve or go mm -hmm. around that, that, that corner there with a long gun. But definitely with a handgun, I can defend my house. 
Exactly. Okay. Let's and I use an extended magazine to do that. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that. I got I got a shorter barrel, legal limit shotgun, but you know, each his own. Each his own. Now, Mike, uh, something we've both been on is open carry here in Texas. You know, we see uh, now Governor Abbott saying that he's going to sign it. Do you believe that? Yes, I do believe that if it does cross his desk, he will actually sign it. Um, I wish that they would pass constitutional carry because there's 44 states in the United States that do not have. Um, well, actually, 44 states that allow some form of open carry. Uh, Texas is one of the few states that you cannot open carry a handgun. Mm -hmm. So we need to actually get constitutional carry passed in Texas, not just license carry. Because right. license carry, you got to have a handgun license. You know what? They do not tax the First Amendment. They do not tax the Third. They do not tax the Fourth. They mm -hmm. do not tax the Fifth. So why are we taxing the Second Amendment? Right. And talking more about the uh, just generally carrying the uh, the pistol on you, we saw some very controversial comments. We had a, a summit, so to speak, last week, week before, and we saw some police chiefs come out and say that, in so many words, that they'd rather have somebody go through counseling than actually carry a gun on campus to protect themselves from a perpetrator. Are you a supporter of the campus carry? Absolutely, it's about fight or flight, you know, and, and we need to have faith in people that are trying to protect themselves. Um, law enforcement officers don't get a chance to practice like they should, and that's why they're not as great shots. Uh, but your individuals who are very concerned about their individual safety are going to go out, they're going to practice, they're going to take that class, make sure they get the right gun, and they're going to make sure they can get that shot off because it's about saving their life um, as a civilian, not as a law enforcement officer who's doing a job, who's checking in from 9 to 5. Yeah. Yeah, because people see the movies and they think, you know, the law enforcement officer shows up. Number one, they automatically assume the officer's going to know what's going on. You know, officer shows up, one guy has a knife, the other one has a baseball bat. They don't know who's, you know, who started it, who's in the wrong. So that you have that. And then on top of that, when the officer opens fire, you know, he's not going to hit his target every time. Like they see the movies, they see James Bond take out a, a little 22 and shoot somebody 50 yards away. It doesn't happen like that in real life. So you, the individual, <laughs> need to have the, the ability to protect yourself. Right. And I agree with you on that point. And any, anyone that speaks out against campus carry, uh, that's someone who wants the, the ladies to be unarmed so they can actually overpower them and take advantage of them. So anyone that speaks out against that, against that that's their purpose. Um, and think about this, campus carry. Right now, you can already have a handgun on a college campus. You just cannot go into the building. You can walk all the way through, for example, University of Texas. You can mm -hmm. walk all the way through that campus with a handgun on you with a concealed handgun license and, the, you know, and have it, the gun on you concealed. You cannot go into the building. So we're talking about the prohibition of the building, to be able to carry into the building. And now you have uh, Senator Ellis, one of the, uh, the state senators here in Texas, saying, hey, it's going to cost $47 million um, to educate the officers, educate the cam campus. Yeah, I heard and, that too. Mm -hmm. And to be able to afford, you know, this bill. And that's malarkey. $47 million. What he's saying is it's going to cost $50,000 per year per gun mm -hmm. for someone to be able to carry inside of a building of a college campus, where it's already legal for you to walk through the campus now. That's completely ridiculous. It's oh, ridiculous. another ridiculous thing. Let me get your comment on this. I'm not say any names, but we saw a police chief saying that he'd rather somebody, if they're going to carry openly, wear some type of identification on the outside of their clothing to identify them as a open carry. Were you privy to this? N you no, know, but you know what? And, and I'm totally against that because it's working in other states. It's working everywhere else, the majority of places here, you know, in this country. So why can it not work here in Texas? This is the same type of argument that they brought it back in 1995 um, to Texas when we got the concealed hang on license program. There's going to be blood in the streets. Officers are not going to know what's going on. Oh, that's so you know? ridiculous. Because, Mike, just in my home state of Oklahoma, I think, was it 2013, 2012, we passed open carry. And so everybody who says that, you know, everybody's going to do it and there's going to be blood in the streets, there's an entire state debunking that right now. Because I go home, you know, Thanksgiving, Christmas, I rarely, if anybody, see, see anybody open carrying. It's not some big deal. Right, because Oklahoma went, you know, went, they had the same thing, conceal carry, then they did license carry, mm -hmm. and license open carry, and it's working great for them. It's going to work great for us. Can't believe it. Now, Mike, our time here is short. So I'm going to ask you, a friend of yours, Cody Wilson, you know, he has the dark wallet. He's doing a lot of the printable gun stuff. I had a chance to speak to him the other day, and now he has the... Uh, the AR-15 processor, the ghost gunner. Mm -hmm. I had a chance to see it at the Texas Capitol. He's saying he's having trouble getting it out through FedEx. Uh, he used to be able to ship with them, now he can't. What are your thoughts on that? Um, he needs to try a different carrier, and we need to, maybe we need to boycott FedEx and not do any business with them because I don't understand what the problem is. They don't need to know anything about it. Hey, it's a legal item. 
their thing is, they said, well, it's not regulated. Well, you know what? Most things are not regulated. <laughs> that makes no sense whatsoever. Right. That's their justification. Uh, so they, they need to go ahead and ship it. There's really no problems whatsoever with that item. Hey, go through USPS or, you know, because he's an FFL. Mm -hmm. He has a license, so they should be able to ship that item. Yeah, completely ridiculous. And also, I want to end with this. So we're talking about things happen, Cody Wilson. Operation Choke Point, we've seen the DOJ, they come after uh, gun shops, banks, saying, hey, don't finance with these guys. Do you Have you experienced this, or have you known anybody who's experienced anything like that? I have, I have not experienced it, but I know some gun stores actually have, uh, where they actually go after them and actually cut their financing so they can't um, either, either they have a loan, they cut that, you know, cut their financing totally out, so they now the, their loan becomes due, mm -hmm. um, or something like that. Um, and, you know, this is the administration's work. This, is, this has their framework all over it, uh, where they're targeting the money. If you can't go after the guns, you can't go after this, well, then, you know what, let's follow the money and get that money trail, and that's what they're doing. Yeah, because, you know, I uh, was it, uh, South by Southwest, you know, I meet all these people. They say, well, you keep saying Obama's trying to ban the guns. Where's the proof? Well, besides the fact he said he was going to do whatever Dianne finds, we can extend this because I see you got something right. on your mind there. Oh, oh absolutely. You know, you got to follow the trail, you know, because this is what they're doing. Yeah. And it's not, it, it, people always ask, why do you need to do this and why do we need to do that mm -hmm. about our Second Amendment rights? Well, you know what? It's not called a bill of needs. It's called the bill of rights. Right. Yeah, because we see uh, Dianne Feinstein, she had all the anti-gun rhetoric, and Obama said he was going to run with whatever she said she was going to do. So he's willing to sit back. So he's hiding behind her for his gun lobby. And then on top of that, we have uh, coming out with the magazines, the ammunition, the firearms. It's like any way they can get it, that's what they're going to do. Right. And even the printable guns. Right. You know, they don't want that technology out there. Right. So that's why we need to be vis vigilant, you know, and um, support our Second Amendment legislators. Mm -hmm. Make sure we're standing behind them and pushing them forward to, you know, catch them as they fall to, hey, keep going what you're doing because we need to continue to remember, hey, this is the United States of America. Uh, this is a land of the free, home of the brave. Right. I'm going to ask you about open carry. You know, I've had a chance to meet with the guys I know you have as well. Uh, they get a lot of bad press. Mm. Uh, any thoughts on how maybe things could go a little bit smoother for them? You know, what's what would be the next logical step? Well, for, uh, for a lot of guys, this is the first time they've actually got involved in the political process. So they're they're not aware that everything they do is going to be criticized. Mm -hmm. um, every turn that you make, um, every post that you post on Facebook. So I actually got a chance to bring all of them together and, you know, sit down and talk with them and say, hey, you know, you need to remember that everything you do online is going to be uh, scrutinized. You know, they're going to look at every single thing. So watch what you do and, you know, let's move forward and get this legislation passed. Right. All right, Mike, give us your final thoughts. Just look right there in that camera and tell us anything that's on your mind. Man, I tell you, you know, definitely get involved in what's happening around this country. Um, talk with your, your state senator. Talk with your state representative. Um, talk with their U.S. congressman, your U.S. rep, and let them know that, hey, we need to, you know, make sure that this current administration or any other entity uh, do not fringe, you know, step over our Second Amendment rights. All right, Michael Cargill, Central Texas Gunworks. Thanks for coming by. Sir, thank you for having me. All right. Well, that's it for this segment. Be sure to stay tuned because right after this break, Alex Jones is going to be telling you about black sites in the city of Chicago. Another major health threat, this one in Toledo, Ohio, where everybody in the entire city has been told not to drink the water. Ohio's governor declaring a state of emergency. Did you know that the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water at home every single day? If there's a water emergency, will you be prepared? Panicked residents forming long lines throughout the day. We're here at a supermarket in Toledo. You can see the shelves empty where water once was. To stay safe and healthy during a crisis, you must must have access to safe, clean water. Water which will not be available at your local grocery store. There's a mad dash on right now to stock up on supplies. The ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system is a must have for every modern, independently minded household. Protect your family's safety during an emergency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today to purchase your ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system or call 1-88-253-3139. For all of recorded history, civilizations around the world praised the health benefits of silver. At InfoWars Life, our mission is to bring you the highest quality, purest, cleanest, effective colloidal silver on the market today for the lowest price available. 
You don't have to be a doctor to know. The fall and winter months are the most dangerous time of year in North America when it comes to you and your family's health. InfoWarsLife.com is very excited to announce our biggest run yet of silver bullet colloidal silver exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Now InfoWarsLife.com has taken colloidal silver to the next level using a cutting edge technique that is free of toxic artificial additives. Now more than ever, it's important to stock up on high quality silver bullet from InfoWarsLife.com and to help others during Christmas by teaching them about the powerful benefits of silver. Secure your silver bullet today at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll free 888-253-3139. We're live, ladies and gentlemen. It is the final segment of this worldwide transmission tonight. Great job, Jakari Jackson, earlier. It is really with a heavy heart that I come to you with this next report. Black sites, also known as ghost sites, are inside the United States. I've told you this for a long time. We sent up to Virginia and other areas our reporters, Joe Biggs, and others a few years ago, and they discovered Army training camps that had torture facilities in them similar to what he had seen in Afghanistan, where he would deliver people to be tortured. And when Joe went public with this, people said, well, how dare you be involved in torture? He was going public exposing the fact that he would deliver people who were tortured, some of which ended up dead later. It took a lot of courage to do that. But the old alchemist refrain is, as above, so below. If the CIA can get away with black sites, secret torture sites in Poland and Romania and Jordan and Egypt and Germany and other areas like Gitmo and Camp X-Ray, they will end up using it against the general public and the American people. Just as the Patriot Act is used in marijuana offenses and uh, people that don't want to pay carbon taxes. They're using the Patriot Act against farmers that build a barn unauthorized. The power structure wants a totalitarian takeover, and now the London Guardian, the Associated Press, and others are coming out with the shocking headlines that disappeared Chicago police detain Americans at abuse-laden black site. They take them there sometimes for days. That violates federal and state law. Total civil rights violation. It's kidnapping under law. And they torture them. They shackle them. They tie them down. They beat them. This is all admitted in court. They keep them off the booking databases sometimes for days. People end up being found dead in the restraint chairs. And the argument is, well, they're battling crime. They're getting the job done. Oh, really? Well, guess who worked in this area? Richard Zuli is tied into this, a detective on Chicago's north side from 77 to 2007. He got orders directly from Rumsfeld in camps in Iraq where he got confessions. I mean, I can get rolled at the gym on my IT band, and I'm trying to answer questions that aren't being asked. Can you imagine torture 10, 20, 30 times worse than being stretched by your trainer? I mean, literally, I have to battle to tell my trainer once a week when he stretches me and does the rolling, stop. He's got a degree from UT, Pat Riley. Can you imagine stuff 10, 20, 30 times worse? I'm a strong guy. I'm telling you, folks, if it went on much longer, I'd do anything he said to stop with the sports stretching. We're talking about waterboarding. We're talking about kids getting raped in front of their parents. That came out in General Tagumbo's own Army report. Incredible, ladies and gentlemen. And now we learn about the bad lieutenant American police brutality exported from Chicago to Guantanamo from this very area, and now they're back here in America with this big, huge, what is it, seven, eight-story building with all of this outlandish stuff going on. Listen, folks, in Europe, in Canada, in the United States, they are building threat fusion centers that are federalization, globalization centers, where they basically federalize your police and train them how to carry all of this garbage out. And that's just the front end of the building. There's another even bigger building down the street. That's a one, two, three, four, and it's got a basement, five-story building, full of all of this evil going on inside. I want to talk to the viewers out there. How much more will you put up with? The IRS persecuting veterans, gun owners, tea partiers, pro-life groups, 
and then Lois Lerner gets a record bonus. The NSA spying on domestic groups. Homeland Security having a summit last week saying Homeland Security is for domestic libertarians and right-wingers, not for radical jihadis. Chicago takes their citizens' guns, the society collapses, there's crime all over the streets, and the answer is torture the criminals till they confess. Now you've discredited the entire police department, the entire judiciary, the entire government. Just like we caught the DEA years ago in what they call parallel construction, spying on people without warrants with the NSA wiretapping systems and then creating fake investigations later to present to the courts, but it turned out the courts knew and were going along with it. Federal courts have 97% conviction rates. State courts are less than half. That's not a free society when you have 97, 98% conviction rates. It's rigged. The federal government is occupied. It's taken over. It's torturing people. And Chicago cops that were involved in this in Chicago are then sent overseas to carry this out, not to battle tyranny, but to sell the idea that torture is a good thing, just like Jack Bauer in 24 would do. This is simply unprecedented. And the reason I decided to come on the nightly news tonight after Jakari finished was it hit me. I was on the air three hours today, and I spent 10 minutes on this like it was no big deal because I've developed cognitive dissonance myself. I've been conditioned knowing this, being so close to it. Nietzsche said, you stare into the abyss, you become the abyss. You dance with the devil, you become the devil. I've become so comfortable with this evil that it was no big deal to me. Like the BBC announced they're going to make people get chips to have you know, jobs in Europe, and I just barely mentioned it. What more is coming if we'll put up with this? It's simply incredible. In fact, I wanted to end this broadcast with the Alexander Schultz and Nietzsche quote of how we burned in the camps. It's laying on the other broadcast desk in there. Will somebody go grab it? Because this is live, teleprompter-free analysis. And by live, we're taping this tonight. Sometimes it's live, but it's live. I mean, I'm live. I'm not scripting anything. I'm here. And that's why they're running in with the sheet from the room next door. Alexander Solzhenitsyn wrote this in Gulag Archipelago that he won the Nobel Prize for that he wrote in the late 1970s. He left the United States because he said we were turning into what he'd fought in Soviet Russia. And he talked about this in Stalingrad. At the time, it was Leningrad, later named to Stalingrad, and how we burned in the camps later thinking, what would things have been like if every security operative when he went out at night to make an arrest, they arrested about a third of the city and killed him or tortured him, had been uncertain whether he would return alive and had to say goodbye to his family. Or if during periods of mass arrest, as for an example in Leningrad, when they arrested a quarter of the entire city, it was actually about a third, people had not simply sat there in their lairs, pawing with terror at every bang on the doorstep or downstairs door and at every step on the staircase, but had understood they had nothing left to lose and had boldly set up in the downstairs hall an ambush of a half dozen people with axes, hammers, and pokers, or whatever else they had at hand. The organs of the police state, I would add, would have very quickly suffered a shortage of officers and transport, and notwithstanding all of Stalin's thirst for blood, I would add, the cursed machine would have ground to a halt. If, if, we would have loved freedom enough, and even more, we would have had no awareness of the real situation we purely and simply deserved everything that happened afterwards. Alexander Shultzenitsyn. Now, we are at that crossroads. All the evil's out. It's all admitted. Free media put down by our founders got the truth out in the face of state-run media. Legions of examples are there. I'm not calling for violence. I was on a international UK broadcast earlier before this TV show and I was asked, Alex, by a listener, is there ever a time? I was on Richie Allen's show, uh, Irish fella. I was asked, is there ever a time for violence? And the answer is absolutely. Not offensively, but defensively. If we can't win the info war, and they come with forced inoculations we know are deadly, they start rounding people up in mass, and people don't come back, and dead bodies are found here and there to scare the public, then we don't have a right, we have a duty that defense is an offense in that situation, and you don't wait. Solzhenitsyn wasn't a military strategist. 
You don't wait at your house for them to come. You go out and you defend the innocence they're going after, and you meet them at a time and place they're not expecting you, just like they come to your house at 5 a.m. That said, most SWAT teams are awake. Police are more awake than any other group except military. They're not our enemies. We need to triple and quadruple and then do it again to the police and military to expose what's happening because the Defense Department plans, the Emergency Centers Establishment Act, the Civilian Inmate Labor Camp Program, the Threat Fusion Centers, this is all a giant globalist foreign bank takeover by the private Federal Reserve. This is it. And this will destroy everybody's future in this country. This is being done to take the pension funds and destroy the country. And it's all out in the open. So our enemies are not the police and military. Our enemies are the foreign globalist collaborators and usurpers that have set this up. So 99% of my work is about winning the intellectual war. There have been hundreds of revolutions in the last 200 years in the world, you can look them up, that weren't called revolutions. Cultural awakenings, velvet revolutions, cultural revolutions, not in the sense of Mao, but in liberty. Better ideas, freedom, people not complying. That's what we need to have now. The enemy wants to have a violent revolution because they can trigger it, they can stage stuff and blame it on us. We don't want to go down that road. But as Churchill said, there may come a time when fighting an enemy that uh, you don't stand up and, and, and you have a, even though you have a good chance of winning, and then later you don't stand up even though you have a moderate chance of winning, and then finally you got to stand up because it's better to die on your feet than on your knees as a slave. So I say that to all the operatives that watch and track us and attack us and everything. Come on, you know tyranny's here. You can't paint up what you're doing as a good thing. Our government runs a radical Islamicist. Uh, they run the narcotics, everything, because it's not our government. It's a criminal consortium, and they know that the collapse is coming and that they've engineered it. And you either join Mordor or you join the forces of good. This is that come to Jesus moment. It's for the rest of eternity. You make the decision. The good news is I'm seeing a lot of good signs across the board that people are really waking up bipartisanly and transcending partisan politics. Great job to the crew. Great job to Jakari. That's it for this original edition of InfoWars Nightly News, teleprompter free information, liberty based with a bias for truth, openly admitting that we try to tell the truth and try to be fearless. Lord willing, I'll see you back tomorrow, 11 a.m. Central, for the syndicated radio broadcast and back Thursday night, 7 o'clock Central, with InfoWars Nightly News. If you're watching, you are the resistance. In the past decade, we have witnessed unparalleled scientific discoveries in the area of health. But no one has put together a formula that focuses directly on brain health, nerve growth factors, and optimizing your cellular energy at the same time. DNA Force is one of the most expensive formulas to produce. Some of the ingredients in DNA Force are $12,000 a kilogram. We are using the coveted, patented, only American source of PQQ, CoQ10, and more. You want the best that's out there at the lowest price anywhere? Well, we're bringing you a total win-win. The ultimate value, cutting-edge, trailblazing game changer that also supports the info war. We have produced a limited run of DNA Force, and it will take up to 12 weeks to produce more once we sell out. Secure your DNA force today at InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. DNA Force from InfoWars Life. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.